Hello, in this video I will show you how to get the most out of your RAW files to reach as much dynamic range and details as possible with 3D LUT Creator and Lightroom. With me, I have here a series of shots made with a Sony A7 Mark II. I shot it with direct sunlight from the window. The lighting was hard so the pictures turned out to be very contrasting. By default, after I did import procedure, Lightroom shows me a picture like this. The girl's face has right exposure, but all shadows are very dark. I would like to get such exposure here, but Lightroom blows the highlights into almost white. It turns out that the dynamic range of the camera was enough to capture the whole scene. That is, if I increase the exposure, I can see all the details in the shadows here. And if I reduce the exposure, all details become visible in the highlights. During raw development, Lightroom adds a contrast, because of which the dynamic range of the scene doesn't fit into the dynamic range of a monitor. Let's load Lightroom Camera Profile into 3D LUT Creator and see what's inside. I'll go to the Mask tab to load a profile. Here in the External LUT section, I click Load LUT. I will load a profile from the Adobe Standard folder. Here it is. I will turn off the color matrix of the profile and only preserve an embedded LUT and contrast curve. I'm curious about the curve in this profile. Here is the curve. We can see this curve on the analyzer. Here we see the standard camera raw curve which is embedded in the camera profile and the user doesn't have the ability to influence this curve. As you can see, this curve slightly increases the exposure and increases the contrast in the middle tonal range. In the highlights, the contrast decreases, and so details and saturation are reduced. We see it in this part. That is, making such a curve, Adobe engineers assume that most of photos will have a smaller dynamic range than monitor displays. This dynamic range of photos needs to be stretched to the dynamic range of the monitor. And for most photos, this works well, but not in my case with direct sunlight. In my case, significant parts of a photograph, namely the skin, are in the upper sloping part of the curve. The shadows and the dark part of the photograph are in the lower sloping part of the curve. That is, the profile's curve only worsens such pictures. Let's see if there are any other options in Lightroom. All of them work approximately the same. Of course, to solve this problem, Adobe has several options. Their tools are contrast, highlights, and shadows. I'll try to lower the contrast. As you can see, something strange happens with color with a decrease in the contrast. That is, the contrast reduction curve is superimposed on the profile contrast curve. And when they are superimposed, everything only spoils. I will try to simulate this in 3D LUT Creator. Of course, I do not know the exact shape of a curve in Camera Raw so I will recall it approximately. I will raise the shadows and lower the highlights. Since these curves are not specially adjusted to compensate each other, the resultant curve produces a lot of bends. In the shadows, the saturation persists. In the lighter parts, it rises. In the middle tones, it decreases and then rises again. This leads to a distortion of the color gradients. This is clearly seen in the photo. The forehead becomes yellow, the temple becomes gray, some pink shade appears on the transition from the middle tones to the shadow, and so on. That is, reducing the contrast in this case doesn't work. Let's look further. Highlight slider is exactly designed to narrow the dynamic range. But you may notice that when you use it, the photo begins to resemble HDR. That is, the girl becomes dirty as if she was mining coal. The photo looks unnatural. I will try to decrease the exposure and lift the shadows, but shadows here do not brighten very much. I will try to use whites. It also doesn't help much because details disappear in highlights. The black slider slightly lightens shadows, but most black areas still remain black. So what to do in this situation? It can be seen that the dynamic range of the camera was enough to capture the entire scene. If I raise the exposure, shadows look great. If I lower the exposure, highlights look great. However, the contrast that is built into the profile burns the photo. 
To cope with this problem, I will make my own profile in 3D LUT Creator. I will reset all settings, that is, I will have an empty LUT, which I will save as a camera profile. I'm selecting the DCP format. I need to save my own camera profiles to my home folder. I open the hidden folder App Data, then Roaming, Adobe, Camera Raw, Camera Profiles. I will name it Raw. In this window, I need to select the basic camera profile. 3D LUT Creator takes its name from it, otherwise Lightroom or Photoshop will not see the profile. Below, you can choose where to save the preset with curves. In the latest version of Lightroom, this folder is almost in the same place where profiles are located. That is, Home Folder, Roaming, Adobe, Camera Raw. Instead of Camera Profiles folder, I select Settings folder. And now, the most important thing to do is to remove these check marks. Inherit Look Table is a correction of Adobe Standard, which is built into the profile of the camera. And I remove the tick Inherent Tone Curve. That curve increases the contrast. When I leave the tick Inherit HSV alone and save this profile, then I'll save the second version of the profile. I will call it Total Raw. Here I will remove the tick Inherit HSV also. The fact is that the DCP profile has three things that are responsible for the color. The first one is a color matrix that allows you to get an approximately correct color from the sensor data. Further, according to the idea of Adobe, HSV correction is applied, which makes color corrections depend on the light source. After that lookup table is used, this is like the HSV table, but is designed to get beautiful colors. As far as I noticed, Adobe moved away from this concept, and in newer profiles it seems that they stopped calculating the color matrix. They record whole correction of the matrix in the HSV table. Therefore, HSV options should not be disabled, but I will make two profiles to see the difference. So I click OK and save the second profile under the name Total Raw. Now I will restart Lightroom. Then open the folder with profiles, and here they are. The first raw profile which I saved with the HSV table gives fairly correct colors, but doesn't apply a contrast curve. The second total raw profile in which I turned off HSV tables gives me a completely gray color, and it will be more difficult to work with such source image. So I will use my first raw profile. Now I can increase the exposure. Let's compare now. I'll make a virtual copy and select a profile from Adobe. As you can see, I got rid of this excess contrast which is embedded into the profile. And at the same time I saved all the naturalness of colors. There are no extra shades on the transition from highlights to shadows. The photo looks very natural. Of course, it is less saturated because the overall contrast doesn't increase. But it is much easier to work with such source images. But you need to keep in mind one thing. If we return to the profile from Adobe, the area near the overexposure gets compressed. Thus, colors close to the cutoff point run smoothly and almost imperceptibly. In my case, this cutoff in a profile with a linear curve will be hard. That is, if something in my photo gets clipped, then the boundaries of this area will look rough. Therefore, it is better to leave some room in exposure. Now, I will open this photo in Photoshop. Since I made a perfect linear development of the photo, it is clear that it looks less contrasting and less saturated than you are used to seeing. And now I can easily make a contrast exactly where I need it. I will open this photo in 3D LUT Creator and reset the settings. I will look at where the skin tone is on the curve. Now I can increase the contrast where I need it. Also, I'll add the saturation with Channel Mixer by moving the red and blue points. Now I'll go into the Sat Loom curve and drop the saturation in the highlights a bit and raise it in the shadows. Increasing the saturation is better applied to dark colors. In highlights, an increase in saturation usually leads to overexposure in one of the channels. 
Therefore, I will make this form on a curve. Now, I can add tint in the shadows a little. To do this, I move the black point in the red curve. Since the forehead has become excessively white, I will return the saturation to the highlights and slightly lower the point of contrast enhancement. This is before and after. I will send LUT to Photoshop. Now I can locally align the highlights and shadows. I'll switch blend mode to soft light. Take a large brush and highlight the shadows and darken the highlights. Here it is without this layer. Here it is with one. I save the photo. Now let's compare it to Lightroom. Here's what I've got with the profile from Adobe. Here's what happened using my method. Let's see how this profile looks in other photos. I will choose my raw profile. It is evident how the details appear in the highlights. If I switch back now, it becomes obvious how these places are burned out when developing by default. I can quickly apply the LUT. Here is the development with Adobe Color. Here is the development with a linear profile plus LUT. So let me remind you what I did. In 3D LUT Creator, I created a profile based on an empty LUT, which simply makes a linear development of the photo without any change in contrast. Next, I open this photo in Photoshop. And in 3D LUT Creator, I created the LUT, which adds a cool look to a neutral photo. Actually, it increases saturation, contrast, and adds toning. That is, it does what the profile of Adobe did, but under your guidance. For those of you who are interested in working with this technique, I started collecting such LUTs in 3D LUT Creator presets, which are designed for neutral development. They are in the log folder and start with the word raw. That is, these LUTs increase the contrast and saturation, but not as much as LUTs designed for log material. That's it. I hope this video was useful to you. I wish you luck in learning 3D LUT Creator. See you in the next video.